Afternoon, gents. How we feeling? All right. Feeling good. I feel like I got to move a little bit today, but I'm still feeling all right. I'm sitting for eight hours. James, you had to get your uh, your cold plunge in, though, right? I missed it this morning. TBC took priority. Did okay. you get a workout in this morning? Wow. We did. I saw Ryan's and Johnny's go. Got that alert on my watch. Nope, TBC took priority. <laughs> <laughs> back at it tomorrow. All right, back at it tomorrow. Speaking of which, I got a question for y'all that's very relevant to just working out cold plunge. So I was in the sauna this morning, and a pretty pretty unique conversation took place. One of the gentlemen asked, is it acceptable to talk in the sauna, or should everyone be quiet, and is it more for a meditation purposes? What do you guys think? Because was, it was 50-50 in the sauna. Who the hell deemed the, the – is there a talking stick? Oh, you're in the sauna. You can't talk. Like who, who said – who makes up that rule? It's a free country. If I want to talk in the sauna, I'm going to talk in the damn yeah, sauna. Yeah, but people are going into the sauna so, to, like to decompress, to like get shit out and chill. They're not going to fucking hang so, out. But if you're in there and you know someone, or there's a conversation to be had, you're allowed to have a conversation. We're not just going to sit there in silence because we're going to piss off everyone else in there who's like – with their headphones on or meditating, or whatever, let them do that individually. Is there a level to it? Are you going to talk loud or are you going to like whisper? Do you have headphones in? Does it matter what level? Yeah, it fucking it matters. If you're listening to music, it matters who I'm talking to in the sauna. I, just depends on your level. Depends on how much you're talking. I do think that it can be aggravating at some points. I, I think that if you're going to sit in a sauna, you're trying to just like relieve stress. You're in your zone. I I don't know. Meditating would be like a whole other level. Some people do go in and meditate. I know a lot of people that go in and stretch, but I mean, for the most part, it's a quiet zone. All right. Well, as you're doing your kumbaya meditation, just zone me in my conversation with not you out. I'm not talking to you or whoever. I'm talking to the person who's talking to You're in to a me, fucking so eight by eight by there. eight square fucking teak wood room. It's not We could we could be having a great networking business conversation. Take it outside. We're not Take it outside. You. We're talking. Take it outside. Take your meditation to the steam room. That's what I fucking say. Sauna, we'll talk. Steam room, I can't even see <laughs> this. There's no even fucking time to talk. <laughs> I'm gonna take oh. <laughs> This is true, but hilarious. Like, true, but I, I still think that. I mean, what are you trying to fucking do a podcast in the sauna? <laughs> That's a good idea. I don't think it's been done before. We could try it. Johnny, I Paul, Kenny, and I steamrolled that. What was your experience today? Because it sounds like it directly <laughs> happened to you. It so. was 50 50. We, uh, listen, you. You start to realize it's the same people that are talking and having conversations in there. You know, talking about life lessons, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Back in my day, I was doing this. I was an all-time this, all-time that. Um, I don't know. I think for me personally, I don't mind the conversations if I know who's in there. Um, and if I'm trying to talk with it, you, Ryan, we've been in there and we haven't said a freaking word to each other before. <laughs> we act like we, <laughs> we act like we don't even know each other sometimes when we're in that thing. Um, I personally go in there more for the most part, a quiet zone. However, I don't, I don't mind the free consultation from a lawyer talking about real estate investments. That was good to over here. I learned some things. Um, but it was 50, 50. It was a split decision. I I agree, though. I think the environment and who you're with in the sauna definitely is important, right? Like, that's definitely a crucial factor to the chatter or no chatter discussion. But I think for the most part, people are going in there to get away. I mean, for me, it's like if people are talking and it's an interesting conversation, like Johnny just mentioned, lawyer talking about real estate advice, I might turn off my headphones and chime in. Or if not, chime in because what can I what can I bring to that conversation? Just listen and educate. 
But if it's two guys talking about whatever, I'll just keep my headphones on. They're not bothering me. So I guess it's how how easily are you irritated? No, I'm not saying I'm going to fucking flip my wig if two people are talking in the fucking sauna. I'm not going to go eight well, shit. Can't, can't. I'm not going to freak out on them. Well, you gotta, you, Kenneth, you're, you're a man who sometimes it, it flips quick. So we're just, we're, we're making sure. You gotta have some, you again, you got to have some com- common courtesy. Everyone's a fucking light length away from getting kicked. So, I mean, you just got to be a little bit respectful in the sauna. You, you can't just go full board. Been doing a fucking TV show in the sauna while I'm trying to sit there and chill out. Like, it's got to be a little bit. There's there's a little bit of happy medium there. But again, it's who you're. It's Mr. who you're Cold with. Plunge. If us four going into a fucking podcast, I, I you know in a sauna, I'm not sure how many people are going to come in and just come chill with us. Like, it's a little bit different. Podcast in the sauna. Where only towels are separating the men in there. What what a fucking conversation. There, huh? Jim, you've been all pretty sure there's actually uh I think there's a podcast that does that. They run, work out, do something else, and then they go in the sauna. That's how they end the the like session. But it's not like a podcast, I guess, but it's more like a vlog style thing. But I saw Aaron Rodgers did it with this guy. I can't remember who it was. Came across it. I feel like it was but, like maybe uh, Lewis, Lewis House or something. Something. Uh, I saw I, yeah. It just, it's funny because it sounds like the opposite of what Kevin Hart was trying to do, cold as balls. Yeah. You remember that with Old Spice? Where yeah. you do a cold punch <laughs> and you have a conversation? Sounds pretty much similar. But, uh, well, I guess I'll give my two cents. Uh, I don't go to a commercial gym. I don't have a sauna at home yet. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I would use it for meditation if I'm doing it at home. Because it's probably going to be a single person unit. But I do remember and recall that when Ryan and I were pretty avid workout partners in our early years after college, uh, we were planning all of our trips in the sauna. So calendars were out. We were getting shit done. I also think it it depends on how the heat affects you, right? Like you're sitting in a How hard your workout was? Or how, like, I mean. Or how hungover you are? I think there's a lot of factors here. Can you fucking talk in the sauna is the question. Like, physically, can you do it? Let's talk, let's talk about that, Kenny. So it, we're in a little box, 8x8, eight eight, as you mentioned, where, you know, you're an arm's length away from the other person. Now I got Joe Schmo next to me, and he's just crushing all of us, doing some yoga, really showing us how awesome he is. Does that offend you? Or because it's in silence... He can do his yoga. He might take up more space. Or does the convert people talking in the sauna, like, are you putting that in the same category because it's in silence? Yoga and the sauna, we're okay with. Listen. At a community sauna, I don't think so. I'm not saying throw a fucking yoga mat out and take up the whole fucking facility here. But people do it. But people do it. They have to have the common courtesy, though, to stop if other people are coming in and it's getting packed. If some dude that's just gym etiquette. Sauna, yeah, I mean, come on. I'm gonna say, bro, like, fucking relax. Go if it's just like, you and this person, plenty of room. All right. Yeah, and then like I'll like lay me lounge out. I'll lay down at like the top fucking level. You do your your fucking yoga session on the bottom. That's cool. It's just it's all it all depends. You got to play the scene. You gotta let it, let it. You know, you gotta look at your environment and feel it out. Okay. I can't do yoga regularly, so I wouldn't even attempt in a sauna. But there are people who just, you know. Uh, yoga is a thing, dude. And then what if they were doing yoga while having a conversation? Just a big old stuff. They're on a fucking phone call? Yeah, I don't know. I might, I might go crazy. <laughs> dude, yoga is no fucking joke, man. Flexibility is necessary. All right? It is. Um, I've, been, I've been an avid yogi lately. Uh yeah, I think, that, I think that's what they call themselves. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, just a Peloton app. But hey, uh, you know, you need that flexibility. You sit in a chair all day and you need to, you need to stretch out the muscles a little bit. But, you know, it, it doesn't go to say that you, 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 you do yoga, you're stretching, but you also got to work on mobility here too. Okay? They're both, they're both pretty important. I don't know if you guys even work any stretching or mobility into your fitness routines, but... <laughs> you know, before my run today, as Kenny mentioned, I, I I rolled out. 
I gave about a 20 second calf stretch on each one. And then we went forward and we prayed to God the entire run that no muscle pulled and no muscle did pull. However, there have been many a times where the calf muscle does go. And then I tell myself, hey, Ryan, you probably should have stretched for more than a minute before going on that run. But I don't know, man. You know, stretching can take time. It does. Like a good stretch is 10, 15, 20 minutes. And we've got it time promotes for it, muscle so longevity, though. Workout. You won't get hurt. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's preventative measures. It's got its purpose. I mean, you remember, right, that before football practice, we always had to go through a dynamic warm-up, by the way, where it's more of a moving stretch and not, phys- like, you know, actually stretching out your hamstrings, bending over, touch your toes kind oh, yeah. of deal, um, which I I don't know. I'm sure there's controversy uh, debate around which, which premise is better. I mean, I always hear the saying, well, have you ever seen a lion stretch before it takes down a gazelle? Well, I think that that lion might be a little bit more mobile, so uh, I think they can go ahead and just take it down or whenever the fuck they want. They're not sitting in a fucking chair looking at a computer screen and Excel sheets all fucking day. But. Yeah, I think it depends on what you're after. You know, I'm like by nature, I'm not flexible, so I spend a little bit more time on flexibility but also because like i think as you get older range of motion mobility becomes a little bit more difficult so you need to concentrate on that a little bit more mm-hmm. so i think it, it all it all goes to the same place which is like what are you looking for and if you're looking for longer um you know i guess longevity and less issues or like joint issues and muscle issues i think you need to do it all it just takes time. I know for the longest time, people have always said like flexibility was key and to make sure you stretch in the morning and blah, blah, blah. It's only been recently that I've heard the term mobility kind of get thrown around a little bit more in the fitness world. Um, and I think it's important because I mean, you, you look at some guys, especially some football players too, right? They're just big and yoked and, you know, they got a bunch of muscle that they're carrying and then people are like, ah, he's tight. You know, that guy's not, not flexible or mobile. There, there's, you know, you can't, you can't be big and flexible and mobile. It doesn't, that doesn't correlate, but I think that's starting to get proven wrong lately. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Juji Mufu. Um, he's a guy that does the splits. Yeah. He's, oh, he's yeah. pretty big. He's pretty big on YouTube. Yeah. I know who it is. Long pants. Usually has a shirt off. He's jacked. Now he's actually doing bodybuilding. He used to do, uh, I can't remember what it's really called, but it's kind of like a parkour type deal. A lot of acrobatics, jumping around, flips and shit. Dude's athletic mm-hmm. as fuck. Parkour. But he was the one that did the – he'll take like the, the barbell, does an overhead yeah. press, and then he's got There's chairs. a lot of splits. His feet split out. Yeah. yeah. You've probably seen him before, Ryan. You seem a little confused. I follow. But I think he's, he's one of those guys where uh, he kind of proves you wrong. You can have size and be mobile and flexible. So it's uncommon that with more size, I think that the flexibility aspect dwindles. I think it's harder to get. Well, one, you know, range of motion is, is more difficult. Well, let me challenge you with this, Kenny. As for what Ryan said, it takes time to be flexible and putting all that stuff. How much time are you putting into building all that muscle versus being able to make that muscle flexible and stretchy? I think that's the difference. It's not that it's harder. Oh, it's yeah. just, it just takes more time. Time, yeah. Well, you're, you know. you're looking at multiple different things. Like, yeah. What are you spending time on? Building strength and power or becoming more flexible and mobile? It's a different workout. And it can take you 45 minutes to do both of those workouts independently. Increase flexibility and mobility and then increase strength training. I mean, two completely different workouts, but they both you know really uh, do a lot to your body, but they just drive you in a different direction. So. Yeah, I think it's all about balance, right? We, we've talked about that so many times. There's so many different ways to work out and exercise. It's all about balance. You got to get cardio in. You got to get flexibility, mobility training in. You got to get weight training in. You got to get that zone two in. I mean, saunas and it's just a lot. But I think I think it's important. There's been the, just a lot of debate about flexibility and mobility recently. The Netflix special, The Quarterback, that takes you through it. Pat Mahomes, and I forget, I think the other one was Mariota, the first season. 
Um, my, they take my, my homes, the can the footage will take you to like his private workouts and he's got sessions that are just geared towards flexibility yeah. and mobility. And then it kind of talks about how he prepares his body for being contorted in different ways. And, and he went through some tough injuries with his ankles and just some of the falls he took where his body's in awkward positions, but they kind of in the episode kind of go back to all that training, all that time that he put in to get his body prepared for those moments when it happened. You know, he was able to make it through and maybe he got a small injury, but he was able to bounce back and, you know, go on to win the Super Bowl in the year that it's recorded. Mm-hmm. So there's 100% value to it for sure. It's just and I think that you have the opposite end of that. You have people like, uh, you know, doing strongman or, um, you know, the world's strongest man competitions or powerlifting as a whole. You know, if you look at people like Derek Poundstone back in the day, who's, you know, a really big dude. But they concentrate on that's a fucking power. Nice name. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. I went to his gym and uh, it's crazy. I mean, this guy squats five hundred pounds like it's one thirty five. Yeah, like it's nuts, right? I mean, these guys are just animals at it. But I, they're they're not going through what Can Mahomes is there? going through on a day to day. They're not getting tackled. They're not, uh, you know, going to uh, to do any like crazy movements or whatnot and then you have to look at it it's like well you have to weigh that out are they going to focus on flexibility or building muscle and there's only so much time in a day to continue to to exercise so I think i'd also argue i also argue for the common man you know it's it's important because uh you could you hear people throw their back out all the time and it's predominantly because their hips are tight Right. I mean, that just, that happened to me this past year and, and I ended up uh, working on my hip mobility and, and I found out that um, my internal rotation on my hip was, was messed up. And so I worked hard at that and now I feel fantastic. And actually from the mobility perspective, I worked on making sure I can get deeper in squats, work on load, that kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, it feels, I feel fantastic. It's so much better. I feel so much more mobile. I don't hurt when I wake up as much. Well, so. now, now they have these places like that, that help you with manual stretching, which is a whole new different thing of, of the flexibility and mobility world, which is you, you're really here like uh, stretch labs. If you've ever heard of that, or there's another one out there too. Uh, stretch zone. I think it is. Uh, it's like franchise model stuff. Uh, or you can go to a massage therapist and whatnot as well, but they do manual stretching or physical therapist. If you go to a sports physical therapist, but manual stretching is a whole new realm of things. If you're not like, they literally strap you to a table and stretch you and move you. It's pretty mm-hmm. nuts, but it's picked up steam in and in and of itself in its own division of health and lifestyle and fitness and rejuvenation and longevity. So uh, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if you guys have ever been to them. I've never been, but I've seen a lot of them uh, and I've gotten manual stress therapy for, from a physical therapist. Same. But not from like a stretch labs or something of that sort. That, that's kind of what opened my eye to it was when I went to physical therapy for my back, but yeah, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, with, with all this, right. We talk about, in our podcast, we talk about the average of the regular person and, you know, you got your responsibilities, you got your family, you got work and then trying to keep your fitness up. Like, but we only have those 24 hours. So it all comes back to time. And the one thing, the one constant that I always look back to is the things I can cut. I feel like I can cut down on sleep. Like that's where I can maybe gain some hours back for more time in the day. And, you know, everyone's different, whether you're sleeping four or five up to eight hours, you know, what's kind of, how do you guys approach that? I mean, Johnny, you might just from a sleep standpoint. What's that sweet? What's that recipe for you know number of hours that you all need where you're going to be productive? Because for me, it's like I'm a night owl, unfortunately. But then, oh, I want to get up early. I want to go to the gym. So I go to bed at, at midnight, and then I wake up at you know five o'clock, and that might work Monday, Tuesday. By Wednesday, my body just says no, and I fall asleep on the couch at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I lose the night. So I think five hours is a good sweet spot for me, but then my body reacts and says, no. So what, what's your hours where you feel like, Hey, this is enough where I feel fresh the next day. 
but also I'm getting some time back or maybe you're not, maybe you're fully committed to a strong sleep schedule, more like eight hours, eight hours. I think it's different for everybody. Um, I've looked into this a lot and you could wear those wearables now, like the aura ring or um, what's the, the band that you have, John, the whoop band. Whoop um, there it is. Sorry. All of these things that allow you to track your sleep a little bit more aggressively and tell you your, they so uncalled, they call it a readiness score, right? So the readiness score allows you to see if your body is fully healed based off of your recovery timeline and sleep and nutrition and fitness levels and all the, all the shit that goes into living this healthy lifestyle. But I think it's different for everybody. I think men and women, depending on where they are, the age in their life, I think that's a factor. I think men and women have different factors. I think where you live has a factor. I think what you consume has a factor. So I think everyone is so different. But I think that one thing that everybody has in common is exactly what you said, Ryan, which is you can get this five-hour streak for a few days, but then it, it gets all fucked up and you crash and then and that's out of the window, right? So it's about keeping a consistent program and trying to, to build that, um, which is the most difficult thing. And I think that's what's the hardest for everybody. Yeah. But to answer your question, for me, it's six and a half hours. <laughs> so specific. But it should be specific from what I understand. I, I feel like everything, like from all the sleep studies and stuff that I've read up on and, and whatnot, you, you, there is a definite sweet spot for people. Yeah. Um, I've tried I, to do like five. Dude, I know someone that sleeps in two-hour increments. Isn't that crazy? All the time. That might be you too, John, but like <laughs> – Legit. It's crazy. You just, you know, you look at your day to day. It's like, okay, you got work, right? You want to have at least a little downtime to spend, whether it's with your significant other, it's with your spouse during the week. We all have things that we have to do post work in the evening to try to be productive, whether it's just shit around the house or it's recording a, a podcast, whatever. Then you want to live the healthy lifestyle. That's an hour and a half minimum. What maybe two hours if you're adding sauna steam and you're talking about commuting to and from work, like all this stuff adds up. So for me, the thing I always try to cut out is sleep. Um, sometimes it's a su successful. Sometimes it's not like, is that, is that y'all's first go to is, Oh, I know I can get some time back. Let me cut out sleep. Or maybe Kenny, you're six and a half hours. So you have to cut something else out because you know, you need those six and a half hours. Like, I guess what's your, what's y'all strategy with that? I heard this thing one time by Stan Efforting. Do you guys know who Stan Efforting is? The Rhino. Stan Efforting, uh, I would say like a power builder, like fucking lifts like a power lifter, performs and looks like a bodybuilder. Um, amazing career in the fitness space. But Stan Efforting does a lot. He was the creator of the Vertical Diet, if you've ever heard of that. Um, I believe it was him this one time he said, if you're going to go take creatine, right, it's a very well-known supplement that a lot of people, men and women take. If you're going to go take creatine, but you're not going to go get seven, eight hours of sleep, you're doing it wrong. It's completely wor worthless. You're not focusing on the right thing. And I believe it was Stan Everything that said that. But why are you going to take supplements – Adding all of these nutritional things to your diet, changing the way that you consume, all of this different shit, but you're not going to focus on the one thing that is the easiest, which is just getting another hour of sleep or adjusting your sleep schedule, which his meaning behind all this was that it's just so important to get the right amount of sleep because your body needs it in order to grow. If you look at a baby, why do they sleep so much? Well, they're, they're doubling in size like it, you know, by months, right? So it's crucial to have sleep. Although I think about cutting sleep as much as possible, it's just not sustainable. Yeah. Johnny, how and does also, someone operate with no sleep? It ages you too. A lot. No, no sleep expert over here. Here's what I'll say, and I'll, I'll put my two cents in. <laughs> 
not that my my opinion matters or or my information or research that I've done because there's not much to it. I think what's most important when it comes to getting sleep, whether it be five hours, whether it be eight hours, whether it be six hours, it's one that sleep environment. Where are you sleeping? The consistency, and then how much are you limiting variables of like screen time? Huge thing. Right. There's studies that show like screen time can actually really create bad efficiency in your sleep patterns. You're talking about something I've really focused on. And this is the single reason why I think my sleep has improved is a consistent bedtime routine where I've never had that prior, um, which has resulted in my sleep efficiency being longer and more consistent. So when I would get quote unquote five hours of sleep, I'd only really be averaging three and a half hours. Now when I sleep, it's more consistent and it's straight through. Do I have to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom per usual old man syndrome? Absolutely. Which is also a good thing apparently because that means you're drinking enough water. Um, And then managing stress. Like if you're able to try to just combobulate that and freaking throw it away, I think that's the single one most influential thing in my sleep patterns being a little bit better. I don't like to overcomplicate things. I think just from like a scientific research, it's information overload. You know, uh, there was like a, what's his name, had like Dr. Walker on his podcast and he was talking about how eight hours is the exact amount and this is the reason for it. And then there's a contradiction from another doctor saying that's actually not true. It's if you get two hours of sleep consecutively, then break it down, yada, yada, yada. Um, It sucks. I wish I could sleep more, but also I don't choose not to sleep anymore. That's a difference. And I think if you're choosing not to sleep or you're sacrificing sleep, 24 hours in a day doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot of hours in a day if you're being efficient with your time, in my honest opinion. Mic drop for sure. I agree. I agree with both of you and Kenny. You kind of made the same points. Obviously, sleep's the most important aspect of recovery. I um, mean, there's plenty of studies showing how crazy people get when they don't sleep. They force them to not yeah. sleep, and they get it gets fucking weird too. Um, your mental state goes wild. Your clarity of thinking is gone. Um, Very cool. and and that's that's an extreme sense for these kind of studies, but it definitely happens on the uh, small amount of time that you to said to basically sacrifice sleep. Um, it's not important. I think I think the better the best protocol is if you really do need to sacrifice sleep, only do it for maybe a day. Not even I would argue don't do it for two days. At least break it up uh, if you have a plan for the week. Uh, that usually works out for me to where I can catch back up. Uh, my body can kind of recalibrate, but ultimately is you, you set the routine. That's kind of what Johnny's pointing out, right? You set the routine. There's a lot of science and different things, tips and tricks that you can do. You don't get the blue light uh, type. Uh, I think they call them cool light bulbs. You can get the warm light bulbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't turn on the blue, the blue lights, turn on the, the kind of like yellower lights that helps um, get, get sunset. That helps, mm-hmm. um, you know, Try to wind down. Don't be doing too much rigorous stuff. Reading uh, helps a lot for a lot of people, but ultimately, sleep's probably one of the most important things after all the stuff that you do during the day. It actually, even to this to an extent of what comes back to mental capacity, it helps you retain information. So you work real hard, do all this stuff, especially if you're trying to get certifications, you're trying to get your degrees, you're trying to do this, that, and the other. You will not remember anything if you do not get quality of sleep. Fact. Thank you, Andrew Huberman. <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like in the the generation of like being able to go on a YouTube or listen to a podcast somewhere, I feel like sleep has become more of a sexy thing to talk about. Like, I don't know if I only believe that or if that's like my perception, but I feel like there's just so much more information around sleep versus prior. It's like work hard da, 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 and figure it out. Right. Yeah. I agree completely. Grind. And, you know, I, we just have access to 
science and medicine so much more now than ever. So, I mean, I actually, I, I can turn this into a question, into a question and to pose to you guys has medicine, not even, not even as a whole, because I think that there's good and bad sides of this. So has medicine, aesthetics changed the way that we view fitness? I think in, in this light, like, yeah, I think there is so much science on sleep and it is a sexy term and it is, it should be a more thorough strategic part of your schedule. Going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, getting sunlight, all of these things now, which we have more access to is crucial to who you are and to be, to being able to actually perform at your, at your peak. And I think that's what the game is, is like, how do I perform at my optimal self? And by having a sleep schedule, I think it's part of that. Dude, I a hundred percent agree. And I've got one specific comment to make on this. <laughs> I used to be on blood pressure medication, no longer on it. What? Had it for, Hey, that's, that's an <laughs> yeah, but that is that no, that's a huge thing because there's it's a huge. lot of people in this. It's huge. But, but why? What did you do? A lot, a lot. So I worked with my doctors on this. We tracked a lot of it. Um, to 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 make a long story short, uh, when I did break my neck, they think that I triggered prehypertension back then. So I've had this since college. So a little over uh, ten years. Um, went through a couple of different very low dosed. Uh, dosed uh, blood pressure medication. First thing that changed was once I was done with college, started have, making more money, I could afford to eat better. So diet, right? Now it wasn't a hundred percent all the way there. Um, then exercise became a thing, right? Put too much stress on the body as far as building muscle. Um, found out that if I do some more cardio, um, keep the heart rate up, that helped a lot. But okay. ultimately it was the continued effort in my diet doing the greens now, right? That's a big thing that's been going around. Greens helped me a lot. My entire blood panel is so much better just because of taking that stuff. Literally a night and day difference over three months. Um, a lot of the stuff from Andrew Huberman where I'm getting more hydration during the day, first thing in the day, getting getting the organs all watered up. I mean, that's huge to just kickstart your body. Get rid of, uh, I think it's adenosine or whatever your body makes when you're sleeping and you have to like wash that shit out. So I mean, cold punches help with that. Sunlight helps with that. Working out in the morning helps with that. There's different factors that can get those things through and be, make you more optimal and perform better, better clarity, better blood flow, um, better recovery overall has made my body not need that anymore. It, it now is able to run efficiently, do the things that I, I'm asking of it to do. Uh, I still push it, but I truly believe it's all the information I've gotten from medical professionals over the years that has helped me put protocols and programs into my daily life that have helped drastically. On top of that, I think that you just mentioned something that I think is key as well, which is the greens has helped better your blood panel. So you religiously go get a blood test and observe all of your the metrics metrics that align with a better better health, right? And I think going to get regular blood work is important because it's it's all a science, right? We know mm -hmm. as human beings, we know these thresholds these days where we know that a minimum and a maximum and an average value of where your human a human body should be for the amount of iron, for the amount of magnesium, calcium, like all, and hundreds of other, we coming from hormone levels to micro and mac, macronutrient levels. So going to get these regular blood work panels done is a really good way to measure your internal health, the things that you cannot see. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you just recently went and done uh, a uh, another test, which a scan. The DEXA scan, which is a whole nother level. If you want to talk about that, I think that that's a really cool way to observe how health and medicine and these advancements yeah. are pretty beneficial. 100%. I, I think uh, what this has shed some light on for me is that I really do need to have uh, a hard look at my diet. Um, one of the, so 
when it came to the greens, my doctor honestly flipped out. She couldn't believe that my blood panel was, it, it, she said it changed night and day from, from my previous blood work to this wow. one. And I think it was, I was doing blood work, I think every six months to maybe a year. Um, so that was the first shock. Um, and then, so again, continuing that effort for diet, the DEXA scan kind of showed me, I'm, I'm sitting around, around 23% body fat. I weigh about 213, again, metrics, just giving some more information. Um, and I want to go down to 15%. So I know that there's a way I can eat cleaner. I, I don't need to, you know, be be eating large sums of, of Chipotle and, and public subs and, and all these other things. Um, I need to eat smarter. There, there are healthy carbs that help you with energy, um, putting more uh, focus on protein and, and macros. So I'm going to go the macro route and try this out with the DEXA scan. And uh, uh, two, two goals, it's not just the 23.4% uh, body fat that I want to reduce to 15%, but there's also this other thing I, I learned through this process was visceral fat. And that's something that you want to keep low. Um, so mine's a little bit high. So again, these metrics are helping me scale and plan and, and, and see what works and what doesn't work, which is another thing, right? Everyone's different. Not everything's going to work. I might be preaching greens, but that might not work for everybody. Um, so there is that you got to always consult with a, a medical professional before doing any of these things, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Cool. 15% body fat is that because that's your favorite that was your no that's 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 <laughs> good oh, that's just what no it's body actually body what is recommended through the DEXA scan what what I should based off my body size nice. so bone oh, death I, I didn't, I didn't, yep I didn't know they gave you a recommendation on that yep it's at age all that stuff and sex comes down to it too because male and female way different on how they carry body fat of course Have you guys done anything kind of like some of the shit that I've been throwing out there? I mean, I know Johnny, I think you do greens too, right? Yeah. I don't I think actually, Ryan, you've gotten on the greens yet. <laughs> I actually, um, it was funny enough because I get my blood work done every three months now. and It's eye opening as someone who is a, I am very much so, I'll be quick with this, very firm believer in being more simple about things can only benefit you more. Um, as someone who lost weight, has gained weight, has changed very simple eating habits, I've seen success by just being just very basic about things. Just don't eat like crap. Lower your portions. Eat a little bit more protein. Stay away from the bad stuff. And exercise and move your body a little bit. You'll lose some weight. And you'll be much healthier. However, on your question around the greens, I actually met with my doctor a couple of months ago. And I was like, hey, like, and I'm not... I forgot the name brand, but he literally did a, a search check and just looked at all the crap in the greens and was like, this is why you're feeling the way you are. Get rid of it now. And I'm like, interesting. Um, and he kind of broke down a lot of the variables and the factors and, and how there's too much of this. And this is why it's offsetting the way your body is and what it really needs to be appropriate and efficient to X, Y, and Z, um, which was really cool. And again, you only get that if you go to an expert. And someone yep. who's a professional in what they do. Um, but I actually had him look into AG1, right? Because you see the advertisements. And it was interesting. He never recommended it. But he actually never heard of it either. Which I was kind of very unique to hear. Oh, really? So we looked into yeah. it. Unbiased approach. And he goes, no, this is actually pretty good. I'm actually very surprised. Because he's like, where did you find it? And I was like, Dude, you go on YouTube and it's all over the place. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, I watch something. They're, they're, it's not false. It's actually pretty good. Like, there's ones that are better out there for you, but AG1 could be a lot worse. Let's just say that, um, which was very interesting. And one little research on his expert level changed the way I felt from a gut health perspective. That's awesome. So, very yeah. That's huge. I mean, there are a lot out there, and I think that's the big, the big uh, uh, checkpoint, right? Um, I I decided to go for the greens on my own, and then I consulted with the doctor after after the fact, which I don't know if that was right or wrong, but I really went from a financial standpoint because I didn't, I wanted the greens, I wanted to try them out, I wanted to see how they went. However, I didn't want to spend AG one prices. No. So I started off with this company called Enzo, which now got bought out by Live It Up. 
um, they're they're still, I think, pretty uh, qu- high quality ingredients is, is kind of what you got to look into. But not all of them are the same. I know Huel is a big one that I think is going around social media late, recently. But yeah, I just want to throw out which one I was doing, which one I was I was consuming because uh, I know a lot of people are looking into that stuff. But Ryan, you put up a goose egg, huh? Yeah, no greens for me, no blood work for me. I couldn't tell you the last time I got a physical or got my blood drawn. Not saying that's good, just I keep it extremely simple. Like Johnny said, whether that works or not, I try to eat healthy Monday to Friday afternoon, and then I splurge a little bit more Friday evening to Sunday afternoon. And I'm, hey, they say I look like I'm 20. I've never seen Jordan play. So, uh, you know. It's working pretty well thus far. No need. Yeah, to man, that tank top's yeah. really doing you some justice. Yeah, sleep a couple extra. <laughs> That's right, man. Look how swole I am because uh, you know I get a lot of sleep, so obviously the body has recovered <laughs> for sure. Unbelievable. No uh, doctor, huh? We gotta <laughs> we gotta change that around, Ryan. I, I my my company used to do physicals on site. So I got my physical every year at work. They would draw blood then, and then the pandemic, they stopped that. I haven't, I have not had the need knock on wood very much right now saying that. Um, I probably will and should at some point, but to this day, I haven't had my drug blood, my blood drawn in four years, so we're fine. Well, well you could think you're fine. That's the fact. To James's point, like that's that's the unique thing. Like for me – until this past year, like I never really took any of that serious, unfortunately. Um, but then you actually peel back and you're like, damn, just a couple of simple fixes from a, a professional can actually change or most important, be preventative future state. Like that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing for me. Um, and I think all of us, right? Like that's why we're doing this for betterment. Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Go see a doctor, bro. Yeah, I mean that that kind of happened to me with the blood pressure thing, right? I was I thought I was fine while taking the pill. Didn't bother me. I felt good. It is what it is. I feel so much fucking better than when I, you know I started seeing my doctor. And we started working on this stuff. Um, you know, first it was vitamin D pills because uh, I mean that's just shit. I just don't get. I don't get enough sunlight and all that crap, um, which is just hard for a lot of Americans, but. Uh, the other one was actually fish oil. So that was the next one that we started doing. And I, it's just, it's these little things for um, low cholesterol, I believe was for the fish oils um, to help that panel. Uh, it's just those little things that it, it might feel incremental, but it makes a, a huge difference, huge difference. Now, I know a lot of people are scared of doctors. I know that's not the reason why you're not going. It's it's more of a, I feel good. Why do I got to go kind of thing? Um mm-hmm. I go find out something's wrong when nothing is wrong. If something's wrong, then I'll go. Yeah, and that's the other side is sometimes these doctors could be a crock of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, Push which the I think it makes it makes However, a point to find a good doctor. I found a good doctor. I asked around, and, and that's yeah. why I like I like my doctor. She's fantastic. 100%. But anyways, that's a, that's a good point. That's a great point. Well, I think it's important to get checked as a whole or just keep up with the the blood tests and the frequent stuff that could potentially lead to you just having more awareness of your body and your and your performance and uh, that's and again what you do not measure you cannot grow so if you're looking to grow in any way it's important to measure it and how you do that these days is a blood test or a DEXA scan or anything else just out there because there's a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. A lot of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Well, I think we hit the nail on the head. So, point is, go get a blood test. No. <laughs> Just kidding. But let us know if you let us know if you do any other if you've taken any other tests that you think are really beneficial because there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, it can be as basic as uh, you know a, a very simple. Uh, I would say a very simple like physical test, like a physical analysis. I've seen those where it's just like observing mobility in different ways or flexibility in different ways, which can be done at home by yourself with no you know professional. 
or as in depth as a DEXA scan, or you know, there's there's tons of other more in depth processes than even a DEXA scan. Or even um, the protocols that you've put into place, kind of like Johnny said with his, uh, you know, nighttime routine. Yeah, those are those are awesome uh, to evaluate as well because what works for one person may not work for another. So if you throw those comments into the thread, it could really beneficial. It could be very beneficial to one person that might just be looking for the exact statement that you throw into the comments. So we're looking forward to seeing what you have to say, and uh, yeah, we'd love to hear it. But until then. Bender the continues. Bender continues. The bender continues. <laughs> the bender continues. <laughs> bender continues. Cool.